Hello, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, we are going to be doing Meal Plan Monday today. And mostly, though, I have to admit, a lot of these are actually just going to be cookbooks. I tend to do a lot of meal planning ahead of time. I, I'm weird. I'll do meal plans like either while I'm at the grocery store and I see everything because I'm a really visual person or I tend to have a list of go-tos in my head and then I'll sort of amplify those things when I'm out shopping or when we're kind of discussing things, my husband and I. So um, let me get started first. Before we go into all of this, the meal plans, uh, let me, well, first I need to welcome people over on our Amazon channel. And we have a bunch of tech stuff in the very beginning. So if you check out, oh, I don't have my carousel up. So here is our little banner. If you are interested in any of these things and you're watching over on Facebook or on YouTube, check out our Amazon live channel here. Oh, this might be the, yes, uh, over here. And then let me see if I can add one more channel here just because. All right. So sorry, ill prepared. I guess it's Monday. I have not had enough coffee today. Um, so in the very beginning of the carousel over on our Amazon live channel, we have a bunch of tech stuff, so things that I use for my live streaming, which is amazing and um, really helpful. So I have my Elgato face cam, which is right here. It's really awesome. I've had it for, I think, two or three years now. So that's something if you want to consider getting a really fancy camera or webcam, you totally can. You don't have to if you're just learning how to live stream or do videos. Phones are amazing and have great quality. Also, something that's really helpful, and it's actually on sale right now, so it is 20% uh, off, so $23.99, is the 10-inch uh, selfie ring light, and it has a little phone holder on there. I would show it to you, but I'm not going to because it's being used currently. It's really nice, so if you are learning how to live stream or if you don't want a fancy webcam, you can just attach your phone to it. It changes colors. It's very nice. The other thing, too, that I want to share before we begin our meal plan Monday day is uh, my Logitech. Here it is. It's my mic. Love this mic so much. We've had it. We've had our Blue Yeti mics for, I think Carrie's has been around longer than mine. Hers might be like four years old. Mine's at least three, I think. Great sound quality. I use it all the time. I use it for gaming. I use it for videos, live streaming. So if you are looking for some great sound quality, it's got great adjustments here, as you can see. And in the back, you can actually do a group uh, live streams or videos. So you don't need to buy multiple mics for multiple hosts. So that's really handy. All right, let's go to meal plan Monday. That's probably why you're here. So first, be before I start off, um, it's my husband and I, it's usually just the two of us. So we try to have different things to store our stuff. And that includes things like these glass jars with the bamboo covers. So I think it's, and it's decorative. I use food as decoration. I don't know why. I just think it's cute. It's probably the little inner witch, the kitchen witch inside. Um, so this is a glass storage. It is $23.99 right now. So I have one for coffee beans. I have another one for like loose leaf tea, especially, you know, those loose leaf teas that just come in like a paper bag and you're like, well, that's not going to stay fresh for very long. Um, this is great. So if you eat a lot of pasta, but you don't use the entire box, this keeps everything fresh. This is the perfect length for spaghetti noodles or angel hair. So I love this particular glass storage because there's different sizes. So for different uses, which is perfect for my family, there's a ton of different storage options that you can also use, but I am using these currently, as you can tell, this one has crumblies. I need to eat more pasta. All right. So meal plan Mondays, let's get into this a little bit first. So I think probably the one thing on my list, so I feel a little inauthentic right now. So the one thing that I definitely am using out of a cookbook this week is uh, lemon bars from Baked to Perfection. I bought a ton of lemons, probably because I needed one, 
And then I bought the whole bag and I was like, okay, well now I need to use them all. So I am going to make these lemon bars out of this particular cookbook. So let's look through it together. This is a fantastic gluten-free baking book. It is 28% off right now. It's actually won a lot of awards. Um, uh, Katerina Sermelge is a scientist as well. So she breaks everything down, like every part of baking. So the flour, different, different kinds of flour, different fats, uh, different flavors, eggs, no eggs, what she uses as binding agents, what cocoa powder actually does to different bakes and how to compensate for it, what baking soda versus baking powder is. It's very, very helpful. Hi, JLo. Thank you for tuning in today. And thank you so much, Amazon customer, for following as well. So this is a very comprehensive cookbook. So in the beginning of this cookbook, there's a ton of information, but there still continues to be a lot of information throughout, including step-by-step -step photos. You probably saw that actually. So there's like a, uh, here we go. So like learning how to make the different uh, pie crusts, or I think she even has a uh, short crust pastry. These are excellent to follow. And I'm a, again, a very visual person. So definitely something I am, I am prepping for, for meal plan Monday is these uh, lemon bars and I have to find the specific recipe, but let me just show you the cookbook briefly. Uh, some of the recipes you'll find. It's beautiful. I bet you this is where my lemon bars are. This looks like a bar section. So that was a raspberry tray bake. Here we have a carrot cake recipe. Something in this cookbook too is she likes to talk about different basics. So different fundamentals first but it gives you the resources to be able to kind of do whatever flavor variations you want to. So like this particular Swiss, Swiss roll, I don't know why I have a problem with that. You can do like pumpkin, you can do strawberry, chocolate. Hello, Carrie from uh, Facebook. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so I personally love this because you get all of the essentials and then it's all the building blocks so that you can actually make your own fun uh, flavors if you want to. So we started off with like a vanilla cupcake and then we move on to a lemon poppy seed with a lemon curd inside. So again, fundamentals. Let me, I found it. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> that tricked me. This is a white chocolate brownie. I thought that was a lemon bar. There is a lemon bar recipe in here that I'm going to use and actually make because I have a ton of lemons and I feel horrible for not using them. Is it just me? I hope it's not. Like I do buy bags of limes and lemons and I do use quite a bit of them, but I feel really bad because by like when I have like three left, they all start going really bad. And I'm like, no, that could have been like two margaritas or, you know, whatever it was. Um, or even lemon curd, because I think you only need like three, four lemons for lemon curd, depending. So I really try to use everything that I've bought at the store. So anyway, I'll show a few more recipes here. I don't have the lemon bar on hand, but that is something I am prepping for this week, which is great. This does has, have savory bakes in here. Uh, we have bread. We have bread. Let me find it. So we have pita breads, which is great. So if you are gluten-free and you miss this, because I do, uh, you can actually make this. The cinnamon roll recipe is excellent. I've made it numerous times. And of course, the one time like during Christmas, I failed. Uh, but it is good when I'm not stressed out. Here's a pizza recipe. So lots of good stuff around here in this cookbook and around the world in case you are wanting to do some more advanced bakes, some more patisserie sorts of uh, dishes. So this is a gluten-free, amazing cookbook. Highly recommend it. Baked to perfection. Uh, Katerina Sermel just won awards. She's a fantastic scientist and a baker. So I highly recommend this if you are learning to um, actually bake gluten-free. It's awesome. So uh, speaking of those lemon bars, here's the other thing I have on hand. I tend to buy a lot of produce, so it's not like I can showcase that on Amazon. 
here are the red peppers that I bought. Uh, so I buy a lot of produce and I have a ton of different recipes that I do use. But like this, I have to have on hand all the time. There's two different kinds that I use. So this one is the gluten-free all-purpose baking flour. This one does not have xanthan gum. So if you are familiar with gluten-free baking, xanthan gum tends to be like the binding agent. Sometimes you want it. Sometimes you don't want it. So this one does not have it in the mix, which is actually what I'm looking for. Oops. Because the recipe I'm using adds xanthan gum to it. So you don't want to double it because it's going to be horrible. <laughs> I've done that. It's 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 gummy. Um, so check this one out. But I also have the one-to-one -one flour blend here. Uh, it's Bob's Red Mill. That one does have xanthan gum and it's actually really nice. I am, I tried so hard to be like advanced flour blender and tried to buy like all of the, you know, oat flour, almond flour and do my own blends. And I'm lazy. I admit it. I don't care. I don't care. So I buy these instead. It's way better. So check these out. And Bob's Red Mill is honestly, I would say the best quality or, um, oh gosh, Kings is another one. I can never remember their name. Anyway, check those out. Let's look at some other cookbooks though. Here we have, I'll just talk about the geeky cookbook first because I'm excited. My good friend who loves Fallout is in town and uh, it made me, it reminded me of him. Hi, Tanya. Nice to see you over on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in today. It's been a while. How have you been? So here we have the Fallout. I know this is blocking it. Fallout, the official cookbook. I had no idea that in the wasteland you would have gourmet food, but here we go. You can even make your own Nuka Cola. So hopefully there's some nerds actually watching this live stream right now. So here we have Fallout, the video game, adorable art. Hooray. Table of contents. Let's go here. It's pretty standard. We have our apps, basic soups. Uh, mains, desserts, sides, drinks, which is just going to be a ton of Nuka Colas. Let's just be honest. So let's look at this briefly. Here's just a small flip through of this first. Very visual. It has to be. And I like what they've done here because they basically, they, they admit because you can't get fallout ingredients in, uh, you know, reality, obviously, uh, because there's a uh, creatures in Fallout, like the mystery meat wrap Neuralark. I like that they have it just crossed out. So it is bacon wrapped scallops, but they're trying to make it mystery meat wrapped uh, Neuralark. So I'm, I appreciate just it's being a little meta and I'm okay with it. So here's how everything is uh, broken down. We have um, what this uh, dish actually does for you as a character. It increases your endurance level, which is hysterical. Here we have our difficulty, how long it takes to make, that sort of thing. And then here is a little story about where this came from, our ingredients, then directions. Pretty straightforward. I think every recipe does have a photo associated with it, which is cool. Tanya says, it's okay. Uh, yes, of course I'm going to ask. And thank you for asking. And I'm glad you're hanging in there. Uh, hopefully everything's been really groovy though. I know it's been a little rough for you lately, but I'm hoping you're finding a little bit of like that uphill, not that uphill battle, but it's finally the silver lining, Tanya, I hope. All right. So here's some more. We have Tato soup, which I don't remember in the game, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Side dishes. So in the beginning of every single chapter or sub chapter, it'll have a list of all of the dishes that you can find in it, plus the page numbers. I personally like that. So uh, this is great. If you are getting together for a Fallout uh, video game gathering, but I won't dwell on this book too much because probably not a ton of you guys are, are playing Fallout. But for those of you that are geeky like I am, who love video games and love the Fallout franchise, uh, this is a perfect cookbook. And if you love cooking, obviously, at the same time, this is so much fun. And it's clever. It's cute. It would make a really, really great gift for anybody who has kids or adult children like myself who love Fallout and cooking. So check this one out. This is the official cookbook, too, which is also awesome. 
let's move on to something more not nerdy. Here we have the Harvest Half-Baked Cookbook. So I'm excited because I have actually not looked at the um, Half-Baked Harvest Cookbooks often, and there is a website. So if you are curious about any of the recipes, I would check uh, Tegan Gerard's website out, the Half-Baked Harvest. They, she has listed so many things. So if you're like, I don't know if I want to invest in a cookbook quite yet, uh, you can try some of the recipes there first and then buy something. So here is what this one is about. The last one that I grabbed from her was a like farm to table. This one looks different. This says more than 125 recipes for instant, overnight, meal prepped, and easy comfort foods. Well, thank you. That sounds great. So we have the basics. There's breakfast, brunch, sides, soups, salads, pizzas, and pastas vegetarian, beef, lamb, seafood, and dessert. So let's dive in and find out what this book has to offer. Here we go. So it says no need bread and pizza dough. So you can do both. You can actually like roll it out and use this as pizza dough or just having it as bread. There's two different sets of instructions here. It's kind of hard to tell, but um, up close, it's very apparent. On the bottom here, there's a tiny little piece of information, just extra stuff if you are curious about how to use the bread dough even further. The top here is uh, our ingredients. Right here on the side, it says, if you've cooked through my half-baked harvest cookbook, you are more likely or most likely familiar with its five ingredient honey butter beer bread. That sounds so good. Um, so it says it's a favorite with everyone who's tried it, including my entire family. We can't get enough of it. So there is beer in this bread too, which is cool. So that's probably what they're talking about. A little story. Here's our prep time, resting time, cook time, etc. Pretty simple, standard cookbook. So let's go into this a little more. Here we have avocado breakfast tacos. Yum. I'm so hungry already. Dad's cheesy eggs. And it's on toast. This is cute. Here is a maple glazed cardamom apple fritters. And I'm learning that apple fritters are actually easier than I'm thinking. Just because when I think of an apple fritter, they're huge. And they're just so weird. I, I don't know. They're actually kind of easy to make, apparently. Everything is separated, too. So you can make the dough. Here's the instructions, the filling. Uh, how to cook the fritter, and then making the glaze. So everything's very, very easy to follow. All right, so here we have appetizers and sides. Look at that. That looks amazing. I love that. Here is Cajun fries. These are oven-baked. They even include the homemade Creole seasoning, which is awesome. That's something really helpful because you can use that seasoning for all kinds of stuff. We have the best pressure cooker mashed potatoes. I've actually never used my pressure cooker for mashed potatoes. That's brilliant. Cuts the time right in half, I'm sure. Oh, there's cocktails throughout this cookbook, apparently. We have a cocktail for every season. Yum. Pomegranate thyme vodka spritz, spicy strawberry paloma. That sounds tasty. This looks awesome. Okay, so here's some salads. Or no, is it? It is an everything bagel salad with white beans and pesto. Delicious. French onion soup. Moving forward, here is the meanest and greenest pizza. Actually, I would, I would be down for that pizza. That looks really good. Very beautiful. Um, here is a harvest butternut squash and apple pizza perfect for fall time. Could probably even add some mushrooms if you wanted to. Spinach and three cheese, something pretty simple. Oh, wait, and it's got stuffed shells. Oh, these are stuffed shells. Yum. Oh my gosh. A penne a la vodka two ways. I have to say I have a pretty awesome vodka pasta up in my brain and <laughs> I... I try other people's and it's just, it's never the same. Well, obviously, but I think mine is better. 
honest, I really do. It feels weird saying that. So I'm curious what hers has in it. She uses basil. I'll have to try it. Here we have a grown-up tomato parmesan pasta. Whoa. That's those are like little um spaghettios. So we're we have a vegetarian section as well in this cookbook, which is really nice. A uh, hot and spicy pot stickers with chili peanut oil. Delicious. Yum. Those look really pretty. A garlic butter ramen. Curried Thai spring roll lettuce wrap. Oh, wow. This would be amazing. And we have a Caesar broccoli with eggy fried toast. That's a really great idea. I really need to amp my um, my vegetable consumption. So I'm trying to find creative ways to make it more filling because it just never feels like, you know, filling enough. Browned sage butter chicken pot pie. Yum. Just the small, simple things to elevate your cooking. Coconut chicken tikka masala would be really good to try. And here we have a Caroline's family chicken most. Oh, no. Mostaccioli? I've never heard of that before. It looks and sounds really good, though. Yum. And it looks like you might even be able to do, like, a pressure cooker or something with the sauce. Spiced lamb hummus. That would be really tasty. Thai basil beef with peanut salsa. Yes. And let's look at some of these desserts here. Honestly, if... A lot of these dishes, it the prep time or the total time is around like 35 minutes to an hour, which would be really great for weekday meals. And everything looks really elegant. Lots of vegetables. On, I mean, there's a lot of uh, just veggie forward dishes in here, it seems like. So I'm looking forward to trying some of these dishes out when I get a chance. So here is our dessert section. And that looks amazing. We have the easiest cinnamon apple tarts here. That looks awesome. Snickerdoodles with eggnog frosting. And then one more here. We have a chocolate mousse, something you can whip up really easily, especially if you're like craving something sweet um, on a weekday. This, is ta this takes 10 minutes, but I guess you do have to chill it, which might take a lot longer. It says at least an hour. So you have to wait an hour for it to be completely chilled. So check this out. It is half-baked harvest, super simple. If you are looking for some really awesome fast weekday meals that you can make, this is it. And if you're unsure about that, check out their website too, because they do have a ton of recipes listed there that are very, very, very good. I've tried a few of them and I'm like, oh, now I don't even know which half-baked harvest cookbook to actually grab. It might have to be this one because I like things super simple. So another thing I wanted to point out today, and I think this would be really, really fun. Where did it go? This is coffee cocktails. I'm kind of uh, obsessed with coffee cocktails. So we did buy two separate coffee beans this week. So these ones are a darker coffee bean, and then we have a lighter coffee bean. And I think we're going to try to do some of these next weekend. We missed our opportunity this weekend. So this is the art and craft of coffee cocktails. There's 75 recipes for mixing coffee and liqueur. I do have a few liqueurs, but I might have to get, I have to triple check to see if they've got gluten-free ones too, because sometimes liqueurs can be a little off with like the glute. They, a lot of them have gluten. Surprise. Okay. So here we have contents. We have coffee cocktails. That's it. Very simple. Let's flip through this. I haven't done that yet. These look awesome. In fact, it looks, this looks definitely less coffee-y than I was expecting, or there's a lot of variety here. Holy cow. Did you guys see the red one? Like the, almost like a red velvet coffee. Um, We'll have to look at that in detail. But here we learn about coffee um, and where it comes from selecting coffee. This is something, honestly, it's taken me years to figure out. I still struggle with it. Um, and we still experiment too. We'll find new coffee everywhere and we'll be like, do we want to try this? And, you know, so it's really fun to kind of experiment with the different coffee flavors, especially if you do baking with coffee. That's something that's a fun experiment to do. Here are different kinds of grounds that you can do whole bean all the way to like super fine. 
And uh, here's espresso extraction. If you just so happen to have an espresso maker, I'm jealous. I want that. I feel like some of these dishes in here, dishes, these cocktails in here might require a espresso maker or, eat, or French press. So keep that in mind. But if you are a coffee connoisseur, this might be a really fun cookbook to have on hand because you can now make coffee cocktails. So this is a super stout. This has whiskey. It has hazelnut cold brew coffee, a sugar syrup, and a light sprinkle of ground nutmeg. You can kind of see that. So here we have the coffee and liqueur options. Uh, so it does give you recommendations in case you are somebody who might be like, what kind of coffee do I get to make this taste really good? They give you all of that information, which is great. Instructions are very clear. And here is the story behind the cocktail. We have the Italian secret. See, I feel like a coffee cocktail is just per holy cow. It's perfect for the end of an evening. Here is the golden velvet. Holy moly. It's like the entire glass is decorated. That's insane. That looks beautiful though. This requires a light coffee with low bitterness. So a Indonesian single origin cold brew. That's cool. This is a crema de la creme. This I think is blackberries on it. So pretty. This is not what I anticipated with this cookbook or cocktail book. And it looks like every recipe in here does have a photo, which honestly with cocktail cookbooks, I personally really like that because I... I need help. <laughs> That's it. I just need help like with presentation because it's so hard to make everything look so beautiful. We have a ginger nut latte. That'd be really awesome during fall time. All right, moving on a little bit further, we have the imperial coffee. I We tend to have a ton of cookbooks or cocktail books with uh, that focus on tea. So it's cool to see one that has uh, that is focusing on coffee and really breaks down the different flavors of coffee and how to use them and which kinds of flavors go well with different kinds of coffee because there is a significant difference. I'm sure you know. So like I hate personally, like this is just a personal preference. Like this dark bean coffee is very smoky. It's it's kind of bitter. It's on it's like smoking a cigar a little bit. Um so finding a cocktail that is associated with those flavor profiles would is a little tough. Versus, you know, something maybe a little light where it doesn't have as much coffee flavor. So how do you really amplify that coffee, you know, flavor? Anyway, we have a Tennessee julep. I'll do a few more of these. Sorry for the noise. My cats are in a mood today. It must be a Monday, I guess. Smoky Bobby Burns. We have a New York, New York Cafe cream. That looks like a dessert. Amazing. And then lastly, uh, oh, no, I want to look for the, the red dusted one. There's actually quite a few, like, dessert-oriented coffee ones. But let me find that. Oh, okay. This is the last one I do, I'll do because there's too many cool cocktails in here, and you should check it out. Death by Caffeine. It's like they got a chocolate bomb and put coffee in it. Anyway, this is the art and craft of coffee cocktails. There are the uh, 75 recipes in here. This is really cool if you love coffee and cocktails. I can't wait to try it this weekend. This is so much fun. Okay, next on the list today here, I'm going to, this is my dumping zone. Uh, I am going too slow, I think. Uh, we have, let me find it, Milk Street Tuesday Nights. So I've been looking through this cookbook in detail. I might be even like a professional with this particular cookbook. This has got some really awesome weekday meals in here. So how this cookbook is broken up, it's interesting. We have chapters that are like fast, faster. We have soups, salads, fastest, and vegetarian section, and flat and folded. So sandwiches and pizzas. So this cookbook, I think, has a photo. I'm pretty sure. Has a photo for every recipe. Very, very helpful. 
everything is really awesome and accessible to everybody. You can find all of these ingredients in a local grocery store. There are certain things uh, that are a little more unique, like spice blends. You can easily find that at um, on Amazon, like sumac. I see sumac at larger grocery stores now, which is great. But sometimes, like, I might go to a smaller grocery store and it's not there. But most of the stuff, totally accessible. So this is how this cookbook is laid out. We have all of our ingredients here. And then we have just a little blurb about where this dish comes from. So everything should be Mediterranean. There's a brief historical or a brief, you know, where does this recipe come from or how this, how we've elevated this recipe. That's another thing. And then the list of instructions is very, very comprehensive. You can kind of see the beginning is bolded. So it, it, it does distinguish like which steps are happening, which is nice. Uh, so here let's, check these out. We have a Moroccan inspired roasted spiced chicken, Greek chicken and potato tray bake. So a lot of the fast, faster and fastest dishes, they are either like a one pot, one tray sort of dish, which is really nice. And a lot of these have a ton of veggies in them. Different, I mean, very, very like lots of variety. I was actually kind of surprised, but lots of lemon. Uh, pasta with tomatoes, orange, and olives. I really want to try this. This is not a um, flavor profile I am familiar with. So chicken a la diavola with broccoli. Delicious. Diavola. Faster. We have the pasta with Italian sausage, tomatoes, and eggplant. I love um, America's Test. Uh, wait, hold on. Milk Street. Sorry. I keep getting those two confused. Maybe they're the same. Anyway, I love Milk Street. They have a ton of cookbooks and they are really fun because they they do tend to be really accessible for everybody and they're very fast. Like the recipes are meant for weekday meals or if you lead a really busy life, you've got kids. Uh, you work a lot. You've got a lot of hobbies like this is perfect. And it's like, I don't know, not gourmet food, but it's like elevated. It feels like you're you already got takeout at a restaurant. You don't need to buy takeout because it's so fast to prep it at home and it's cheaper. So it's just it's really nice um, with all of Milk Street's recipes. So anyway, I don't I'm so rambly today. We have a creamy asparagus pasta. Sautéed cod with zook. And by the way, for those of you that are viewing us over on Amazon Live, Facebook, YouTube, make sure to leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from, what kinds of meals you're prepping for the week. Uh, I was saying earlier this week, I use, or I was saying earlier on this live stream, I use, so, uh, so sometimes, I go into some of these cookbooks and I usually, it's usually like one recipe that inspires me. So first I might look at this like roasted butternut squash with chickpeas, herbs, and tahini. I'll look at all of the ingredients that are listed there. And then I kind of think about, and I've been doing this for a really, really, really long time because we kind of grew up a little poor. So we were trying to like do the whole couponing thing and everything. So I try to visualize like how much butternut squash I'm going to be using. Will we be using the entire thing for this recipe or like herbs? That's the big one. So like sometimes you only need a teaspoon of dill or something. So I buy a whole package of dill and now it's like, okay, I only need a teaspoon for this. So now what else can I use dill for? So I have other recipes that I've used like, um, oh my gosh, tzatziki, always uses dill. You can have like more Mediterranean dishes or you can do like uh, bagels and lox. That's another one we do. So like I try to think about the ingredients on a dish that I'm like, I really want to make this. And then I try to think about other dishes or um, places that use some of these ingredients. Like, you know, if we've got a lot of lime, I might be like, okay, let's do like Latin American food or Thai food or Vietnamese food. So I try to think about the ingredients I might have left over so I can use everything. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so 
Anyway, moving on to more cookbook stuff, but I'd love to hear about how you meal prep um, every single week, or if it's just sometimes I like to fly by the seat of my pants, just like I'm at the store and I'm like, I don't know what sounds good. I'm just going to buy this. I do that too, very often. Anyway, so yeah, let us know in the comments. Here we have a Greek baked vegetables. It's called Briam. Zucchini and saffron risotto. Whoa, that is yellow. We have here a creamy zucchini and pumpkin seed soup. That looks really tasty. And we have pizza with salami and smoked mozzarella. So this has got a lot of good stuff in here. If you love Mediterranean food in particular, I'd totally suggest this. This is Milk Street Tuesday nights. It's 43% off, $19.99. Lots of recipes in here and for a fairly decent price. All right, let's look at here. I have to drink a little bit of coffee before we start. Holy cow, Walk for Less is $4.99. Okay, so this is $4.99. What? Okay, we're going to look at this because uh, the this particular series is great. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So here, I need to drink coffee too. Oh, gosh. Walk for less. So here, this is by Ching Hee Kwan. Uh, we start with budget chop suey stir fries and fried rice. Egg, si egg siding on a budget. Fast, fresh. So this is, again... Good for quick meals. If you love like Asian cuisine, this is definitely going to be up your alley. And it's 83% off. It's usually $29.99. It's $4.99 right now. So you can find that on our Amazon live channel, which is listed down here. So let's, let me showcase this. It's cute. Everything looks like it. Most things have pictures which is pretty cool and very nice. I like that we don't have shiny pages. I don't know. I hate shiny pages. We also have vegan options. It looks like on the very bottom of most of these dishes. Let me find it. I saw here. So there's a little um, mark that talks about vegan options in case you are trying, you know, because this is a veggie forward uh what is this again? Walk for less. I swear there was other, this is a whole series of walk for blank or walk for, um, but this one I feel like was more veggie forward. Maybe I'm thinking of a different series, but anyway, there's vegan options in here too. That sometimes can be really difficult with Asian cuisine because there's a lot of like fish sauce, oyster, uh, oyster sauce. Um, there's a ton of different like anchovy paste is in things like kimchi. So sometimes it can be really difficult, but there are vegan options in here. So let's look at some of these. We have our pantry essentials, which is of course really nice to have on hand meal planners. So for those of you that need some help with meal planning, including myself, this is really helpful. And here we go. Let's look at some of the actual dishes. We have a Cantonese, Cantonese style ham and egg fried rice, basic egg fried rice. So you can make a vegetarian. You don't have to add ham to it, which is nice. Um, and it does say she's using a sticky char siu roast pork and she gives us the page number. But to keep it vegetarian, you don't have to. So I like just how she's incorporated different versions of the same dish in case you have some dietary restrictions. Uh, Zeshwan pork, cucumber, and chili sauce. Delicious. Here are our ingredients. These are our instructions and then a small blurb. You'll see these cute little symbols here. It talks about like how much prep slash cook time you might have. This is 10 minutes of prep and then uh, five minutes of actual cook time. What? No. Apparently, that doesn't make any sense. You can't cook pork in five minutes, can you? Oh, it's bacon. Yes, you can. Okay, so ham, peas, spring onion, yum. This is a super easy dish for weekday meals. Here we have egg siding on a budget. I'm noticing this does seem very vegetarian friendly. Taiwanese lun pia or rune bing pancake. 
Here is an example of a ooh, Chinese style oyster so sauce beef egg omelet. That looks amazing. I'm so hungry already. Uh, simple Singapore noodles. Ooh, Japanese teriyaki beef udon noodle stir fry. That looks really awesome. I love the food photography in here too. Everything looks like really minimalistic and clean. It really showcases the food too, which is nice. Uh, Yusyang aubergine with French beans. This looks fantastic. Again, this book is $4.99. I'm shocked. Mapu tofu with mushroom, uh, mushrooms, peas, and bamboo shoots. I love mapu tofu, and it's become kind of like I find that curry tends to be one of those things that I, I make if I have like a ton of different vegetables and I'll throw everything in a curry. Mapu tofu is almost becoming a little bit of a thing like that for me too because like it's got like this really good spicy sauce and you could put broccoli in it, carrots or whatever. And now that I know you can put like peas and bamboo shoots and I'm like, I'm, it's just going to have every vegetable in the land. It's so good. Oven baked sweet spicy salmon with oyster sauce noodles. Delicious. Here, oh, sweet and sour chicken. What kind? I'm wondering if this might be a, I think this is a Chinese style sweet and sour chicken. Here we have an easy Hainan chicken rice. There is a famous um, food truck in Portland that serves just that. And we missed our opportunity to actually try it, but I, it, I'm really curious about it. Maybe I'll try that here and see what it tastes like. Cause I really wanted to try the food truck. Here we have a hoisin roast duck leg. That looks phenomenal. We have a hoisin roast duck lettuce cup. Spicy cumin lamb dish that looks really tasty too. Vegan smoked tofu dumplings in a savory broth. Wow. Beautiful. I wonder if this actually does. Oh, yeah. They tell you can make your own dumplings. So it tell tells you how to make the filling, uh, different dumpling wrappers, that sort of thing. Pork and prong mushroom and bamboo shoot shumai. Yum. I love shumai so much. It's my favorite. Here we have easy sack salads, sorry, pickles and sides. Different sides and things that you can have for with some of those mains that we just showcased. But this is a really great cookbook for Asian cooking, especially since it has vegan and vegetarian options all throughout. I love that. And it's only $4.99 right now, 83% off. That's pretty amazing. So this is Walk for Less. Budget-friendly Asian meals in 30 minutes or less. I'm shocked. This is awesome. I love that. All right. So the next book I want to showcase is one that's really important and very cool. It is Code Noir. This is 16% off right now. 29 um, 47 Beautiful cookbook. Love this. Uh, Afro-Caribbean stories and recipes. Let's oh, look at this. Okay. So let's showcase some of these. Wow, even the cocktails in here look just so good. Here we have a ton of different dishes. This is the first time I am looking through this, and I'm so, so excited. I've gone to the Caribbean one time when I was like, I was 10, and I feel, so as a, you know, stereotypical 10-year-old, all I had was ribs. They were good. They were excellent, but I didn't really try anything else. And I regret it now as an adult because I'm like, there's so many, like, I remember seeing just the whole table settings that my family had and everybody had so many cool dishes. And I'm like, why didn't I try more? Because I was a silly kid, but I'm excited that I can bring some of this maybe to my own home. We have pantry basics. Uh, yeah, pantry basics, basic recipes, shareable bites, everyday eats, low and slow, Sweet treats, pickles and sauces, and drinks. Lots of drinks. I saw those. Those look awesome. Here we have our pantry essentials, including tamarind, sugar, um, scotch bonnet, thyme, yams. We have, uh, there's way more here. There, everything's in alphabetical order. Red snapper, red kidney beans, 
green mango, okra, passion fruit. So you can go through this and learn more. Some of these ingredients, actually, I think most of these should be accessible. Oh, I lied. I don't even know what a cassa reef is, but I can learn here. A cassa reef is a thick black liquid made from the juice of grated bitter cassava. I didn't know that. And it's boiled down to caramel. Cool. So lots of cool stuff to learn here and beautiful photos. Let's look at some of the dishes. We have acris, a black-eyed pea fritter. Ooh, yum. Those look perfect. Excuse me. And do we get the dipping sauce too? I'm curious. Oh, it says it's a tomato sauce. So it does talk about the dish on the very top here, where it comes from, because we're exploring like all of Afro-Caribbean areas. So the food is just going to be so diverse and beautiful. And then we have here our ingredients and our instructions. So we get to learn a lot about each dish, which is cool. Most of these do have photos throughout alongside these recipes. We have a crispy okra and corn fritters, two separate dishes here. And then it moves on to other side dishes that they do feature. Here's rice and peas, uh, arancini, delicious. I think I've had a, a arancini like once and that's only because they had a gluten-free version of them like the one time. Uh, so here we have a stewed peas with spinners, yum. Moving on, a bygone, I apologize if I'm saying some of these incorrectly. It's a bacon choka with coconut tune. So it's roasted eggplant and coconut polenta. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Oh, yum. That sounds awesome too. Creamy, delicious. Okay. We have roasted plantains with chili, peanut, lime, salsa, and feta. I'm never going to say no to a plantain. And I, I've never thought about stuffing a plantain. And now I'm like, my whole world is opening up. I'm like, oh, I have ideas already. Plantain and pumpkin curry. Yum. That would be perfect for the weekdays. Let's move on. We have a ceviche dish. That looks so stunning with, you could probably grill your own plantains or dry them out as chips. Oh, plantain chips. Okay. Saltfish and saltfish souse and bakes. Delicious. With the ceviche or a mango salsa. Saltfish and ackee. So these are served with fried buns or bakes, fried plantains, and avocados. Oh, so good. Trini doubles. Man, this looks, I'm so excited to cook out of this cookbook. We have a roasted mojo pork shoulder. I can't believe this is like 29% off or not percent off. It's $29. A pepper pot soup with spinners. And I think I've actually had pepper pot before. I had a friend make it for me and it was very good. I'm so excited we have it here. Here we have some desserts in towards the back. Plus, of course, we have um, drinks too. So this is a pavlova with passion fruit curd with whipped mascarpone. Sorry, I'm going through this so fast, but we're running out of time so quickly. But you kind of get the gist of this cookbook. There's a lot of beautiful recipes in here and a ton of flavor. Ooh, this is a bajan hot pepper sauce. I'm sure I butchered that. I apologize. This looks good. I will try any hot sauce. Uh, we have a pineapple chili sauce and a Trini Chow. So that's from Trinidad. And tapache. Ooh, this is pre-Columbian Mexican dish used corn to make the drink. Whoa. So it's actually called drink of the corn. We go into some actual uh, other. I noticed that some of the ingredients, they like they're breaking down nutmeg here and how it's used in a lot of these dishes, which is cool. So you'll find that throughout this cookbook too. We have a Guinness punch and a mango lassi. Oh man. So check this out. You can find more of uh, me talking about some of these books and Carrie as well on our uh, socials. So make sure to check those out. If you are like, hey, wait, I missed some of those cookbook stuff. You can find more uh, previews of that on our socials. So make sure to uh, tune in there. So this is Code Noir. 
Let's move on to our next cookbook, one that I picked up from the library. We have Ahmad's Syrian Kitchen. This one had just such a beautiful cover. It looks like tile. Uh, so it's a love letter to Damascus. It's the first time I'm actually looking through this one. I'm really excited because I've never made Syrian food. And I'm, I probably had it. I just didn't know it was Syrian. So I'm excited to bring this home. We have spice mixes, basics, mise dips, um, mains, desserts, and drinks towards the back. Here's what this looks like, which is filled with photos, which is a bonus for me. Yay! And hopefully for you too, of course. This looks really good. Everything looks so modern and um, bright. So let's look at the spice mixes here. We have a ton of different, you can make your own ducca. Uh, we can also make, I think, our own here. Here's an entire list. Uh, Baharat, uh, we have the, two, oh, I can never say that correctly, toke, I think. We have capsa spice mix. So here you can learn how to do that yourself without buying it, which is really, really helpful, honestly, and condiments too. You don't actually have to buy these or go to a special store. You can make them. A lot of the ingredients are available. All right, let's look at some basic recipes here. This, oh, how a deer. It says, in Syria, everyone is always ready to welcome guests at any time. And of course, always with some food. In Damascus, we have something called how a deer, which means, quote, ready things. So it says uh, a how a deer is like jars of two or three types of olives, pickled eggplants, cheeses, cooked sliced beets. Yum. This looks so good. So it's a table setting. It's so it's like anybody can come over and there's food. I apparently might have come from Damascus because that's how I like to live my life as well as just like being prepared for people to come over and eat food. So here we have a confit garlic oil you can make yourself, a tahini sauce, crispy onions, two separate dishes, by the way. Um, let me find a dish that presents all of the uh, elements in the recipe easier for you. All right, so we have different hummuses here. First, we have the ingredients for hummus itself. So it says dried chickpeas, baking soda. Interesting. So here's how you prepare the chickpeas. Then here is the garlic oil that you can add to your hummus or while you're, you know, on top of the hummus. Then here is what you do for the hummus itself all the ingredients and the directions are broken down. So everything is very compartmentalized, which is pretty cool. So if you're somebody that needs to have very, very clear instructions, this cookbook is perfect for you. So this says lamb's liver, that's sauda. So here is how you prepare the liver and here's the directions and how here's how you would serve. You would serve it with pita bread, tahini, pickled cucumbers, which if there's additional recipes so like the pickled cucumbers it gives you the page number as well which is very helpful i love that so let's move on we have a tabbouleh here's a they leave so much space here so a lot of these dishes have to be fairly easy because like this is just how to make the dish and then blank this is the history or i guess the description of the dish itself flavor profile wise a lot of people know what tabbouleh is but some people might not I wish they would give us more history personally, but that's okay. I'm just a history nerd. All right. Here we have some additional photos of some of the other dishes that might be presented. This is a baby eggplant and cheese dish. Delicious. That looks awesome. So this is still appetizers and sides. Let us go to, there's a ton of appetizers and sides. Yes, a falafel wrap is a side. It's an appetizer. I feel better because <laughs> it is. Um, this is a hara aspu. I think I said that incorrectly. Um, so they talk about this is a pasta dish, apparently, like a pasta salad. It looks like it. This looks amazing. Okay, moving forward to mains. There's a ton of sides. Like compared to the appetizers, there's not as many mains. So here we have a lentil soup, which looks beautiful. Everything's blended together. 
I can't believe they have such like huge blank spaces in a lot of these dishes. Uh, this is a lamb shoulder dish and it talks about how to serve these. So if you wanted to um, serve it with rice or the cucumbers or even in pita bread, something like that. So I do like that because sometimes I'm not as familiar with Syrian food, like I said in the beginning. So I, I need some guidance on how to actually eat and properly serve. Syrian fish and chips with tahini sauce. Yum. Here is a baked eggplant and lamb dish. Perfect for weekdays. Super easy to make. This is a rolled and fried. It says it is a kibbe miklia. I'm sure I said that wrong. It's lamb and beef. Wow. Like a, um, not a dumpling. Why can't I think of what that is? It's kind of a dumpling. Moussaka, another really um, popular dish that I think I've actually had. So I have had some Syrian dishes. Hooray. Let's look at some desserts before we move on here. I like in the beginning of each chapter, we have a list of the desserts plus the page numbers. It's super helpful. All right. So here we have a bird's nest. Cute. A vespusi. Look at that. That looks so tasty. Man. Um, this is a Ibiza Konofa, which I've never seen before. It almost looks like that bird's nest again. And here, ooh, what is this? It's cheese. It's like a cheesy dessert. A Konofa Nablusia. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to butcher that, but I did. I'm so sorry. Here, let's look at some of the actual uh, drinks, too. They have a tamarind juice that looks awesome. I mean, it sounds amazing. But here we have a coffee dish, too. So um, it, this is how you make Turkish coffee, which, honestly, I appreciate. I've heard Turkish coffee is just phenomenal, and I've never had it before, but I have heard, like, amazing things about it. Here we have a tea. Chai is tea. So when you say chai tea, apparently it's saying tea tea. I just learned that like a month ago. And then we have a kamun, which is a cumin seed and lemon drink. Sounds interesting. I don't know if I love cumin that much in a drink version. And we have conversion charts. So if you are somebody that needs like multiple uh, measuring or metrics, you can get that. So this is Syrian kitchen. This looks really, really good. I am excited. Everything looks pretty approachable, approachable. And I haven't really eaten a lot of Syrian dishes. So I'm excited to try some and everything is like laid out in a perfect way where it's easy to follow. Okay. So the final cookbook, I think that I have for you guys today, um, that we have time for is the Great British Baking Show, The Kitchen Classics. So I haven't looked through this one yet either. We're going to do it together. This sounds uh, fun. And they have a ton of cookbooks out now. I just want to make sure or I want to see if this is like more approachable. Because some of the Great British Baking Show, as understandably, the, the bakes are insanely difficult to do. I'm thinking this one might be better for people like me where it's like I bake as a hobby I'm not like super baker I'd love to be so let's look at this together here we have an introduction different notes here's all of our bakers I think from the previous season actually um because I haven't actually caught up to the latest season yeah because we have a different host as well and I'm unfamiliar with her unfortunately so I have some catching up to do but here we have cake, biscuits, bread, pastry, pati patisserie, dessert, chocolate, and free form or free fun from. Let's look at our first chapter. All right. This is a tiered coconut cake. I might be wrong because this is page two for the directions. So you'll see here's what you need to decorate. They have a whole separate section. Oh my God. Okay, to be fair, this is a huge tiered cake. So, of course, there's going to be a ton of ingredients. But the whole side, that is all ingredients for the frosting, for the passion fruit curd, for the sponges. Here's our list of directions. Holy moly. And then 
I'm trying to see if there's uh if it's from one of the bakers from the previous season. Usually they list out who the baker was that created this dish, but nothing. I don't know who this was made by. It looks stunning. Okay, well, comparatively, this one is way more approachable. This is a blueberry pecan and cinnamon crumble tray bake. Um, here we have everything in bold for the beginning of our instructions. Here's our list of ingredients and um, the tools you will need for them, which is very helpful. We have here a pastel. Oh, this is stunning. Holy moly. Do you guys see that? It is different. <laughs> never seen a cake like that. Okay, so this is a pistachio and raspberry vertical cake. I've never even had a vertical cake. That sounds amazing. And this is beautiful, like very cottage core. Okay, so let's look at biscuits, ginger crunch ice cream sandwiches. Delicious. Oh, iced party rings. Those are cute. That would be fun for summertime. I love the colors. That's so much fun. We also have a pecorino walnut and rosemary shortbread. So not just sweet. Uh, there are some savory bakes in here too, which is fun. We have bread. This is a porridge bread. Never heard of a porridge bread before. I wonder what the difference is. It's a mix of grains with different textures and flavors. It says, but whatever porridge you're having for breakfast, never throw away your leftovers because you can actually use it for bread making. That's kind of amazing. Uh, French baguettes. Here is a recipe that is uh, from one of the bakers from previous season, which is great. I'm shocked where the other dishes are from. We have a kale, pesto, and roasted red pepper babka. Yum. Anything with pesto is going to be tasty. Moving forward, we have a curried vegetable pie. Wow. I mean, this looks phenomenal. Then here we have some patisserie. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so pretty. Okay, so here is a passion fruit and mango opera cake. I love those flavors. Prue's tart a palms. Wow. Can you, I mean, this would take me forever to do. It looks beautiful. Uh, rhubarb and custard milfoil. I'd love to make that one day. I have a lot of things I'd love to make. Paul's ginger and orange treacle puddings. Holy cow. Okay. Can you, I think this would be a really cool um, spring sort of dessert dish. Like I know Easter just passed, but I feel like this would be a really fun thing to get together and maybe do a tea party. I don't know. That's what it's, that's what I think. This is an apricot curd and meringue roulade. I don't usually see a lot of apricot dishes either, so that's kind of fun. This is a salted caramel praline so souffle with hot chocolate sauce. Wow, delicious. Prue's caramelized white chocolate and black currant cheesecakes. That looks awesome. Uh, so this is a vegan blueberry and lemon cupcake recipe. I'm, I like that they've got some vegan dishes in here, too, because I remember the season that I stopped watching. Um, the cute little vegan baker. She didn't last. I, I think she didn't last as long because there was a few things that required non-vegan baking. And she, understandably, that's, like, really tough to do. I'm a gluten-free baker, so, like, trying to incorporate flour and I can't taste anything or, like, yeah, it would be, it'd be tough. Uh, here we have a dairy and gluten-free lemon cake. Cool. Speaking of dietary restrictions, uh, vegan mini pot pavlovas. I'm wondering if the, uh, we're seeing more gluten-free slash vegan recipes in the latest cookbook because they might have gotten some heat from that particular uh, season I'm talking about with the vegan baker that got cut. Uh, yeah, that got cut because of the vegan baking. Anyway. Here we have some basics, basics as a Victorian sponge could possibly be, or a, a sausage roll, chocolate fondant. So this is a lot of really cool baking recipes. It does seem a little more approachable than some of the previous cookbooks that the Great British Baking Show has put out. Um, there are still very complicated dishes in here, understandably. 
So I, I kind of dig it. It'd be kind of a really fun uh, baking book to go through, start from the beginning and try to bake everything and see if you can do some of the more difficult bakes as you introduce or start to experiment more with baking. So this is the Great British Baking Show. Um, Kitchen Classics. Thank you, Kat from Outer Space from for following on Amazon. I love cats and space. That's a perfect name. So that is my final cookbook for today of the ones I have. Make sure to stay tuned and check out our other socials if you want more deep dives in some of the books that maybe I didn't cover today or um, if you just want more look throughs like longer previews. Make sure to follow us here over on Amazon if you do enjoy cookbooks especially or just other cool things. We do kids books, gourmet foods, that sort of thing. We're kind of just a very all-inclusive kind of channel. Thank you so much for listening to me today and checking out this live stream. Can't wait to see you next time and have a fantastic Monday.